Good morning, everyone. Hi, Erica. Hello. 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 Um, Annika's been here for about five minutes, but uh, it's very quiet. Well, it's uh, there's still five minutes till start time. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd use yesterday's um, background. Yeah. Smart. Still pertinent. Very true. It's pertinent every day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll pause recording for a second there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. And uh, you'll note that we're recording this. So um, if you object, please give us a wave or um, kind of slip out now because uh, that's what we're doing. That's, what, that's the plan for today. Um, so as I mentioned, I've been doing this for about a week, this pitch, and, and I want you to see a different take on um, uh, imposter syndrome. And I want you to see it in the light of micro behaviors and workplace cultures and how that um, affects us all personally. And that affects us all, male or female, but to different degrees. And I think that's the important thing. I, uh, if you don't know me, I uh, have various roles, but one of them is the chair of the um, CPS Women in IT Task Force. And you'll see uh, various, various members of the task force here on the call. So we've got Petra, Nurshan, uh, Priska and Erica who, and Arnheide, um, who are all very much part of the Women in IT Task Force and have been uh, a huge part of building the Diverse IT Charter, which I know some of you are now applying to be uh, certified in. Um, I'm going to do some voting on this call, only two votes. Um, but if you want to take part, you should go to slido.com, which you'll see down the bottom here, and it will ask you for your Slido joining number. And this particular session is session 949712. So if you go to slido.com whilst I'm talking, and then 949712, and it will allow you to vote along with the along with the rest of the audience. So just thought I'd um, go through some of the things that happened in my long IT career. I'd, I've spent you know nearly 40 years in tech, which is horrendous, and I I've enjoyed music at the same time. So here are some of the top albums in my life but actually this is an awful lot of different jobs that I've had you know as a data center manager and a technical instructor for IBM and a tech manager for IBM and strategic business development and sales and sales management and uh, and so I've got a long corporate career in IBM in the UK, in BT, our, at the time, our only um, telecoms provider, and uh, in uh, shipping companies in Citibank. So big companies where my life in, in the IT world started. And I had a great career. So there were some fabulous things about this career, you know, I, I got to live in America for months. I, I worked on books. I've written two books, hugely intellectually stimulating and um, fabulous, fabulous people to work with. But there were some problems. The Sex Pistols are there because I loved them, but they caused me grief in that I didn't bother going to some of the major exams that I should have gone to when I was really young. So I never got to university and went straight into um, a career. But, but the big issues in my corporate life were around caustic management and bullying and the glass ceiling. And yes, I really hit the glass ceiling. 
and lack of personal belief. I thought I wasn't worth it. And this is that example of the imposter, sy imposter syndrome. I just thought I didn't belong. I thought everybody else was better than me. And it really got to me. And, and then I started reading that actually it gets to lots of women in the technical industries and indeed women across all corporates. And yeah, it was very powerful. One of the ways in which I fixed my, uh, my kind of stuckness under the glass ceiling was that I went and got myself external roles and I advise all women to do that. I, I imagine that for all of you, because, because I can recognize some names, you've done exactly that. And this is a powerful way to fix that, um, that kind of inertia that, that happens within corporate life because you learn so many other skills and you get notoriety outside of the, outside of the workplace. But I want particularly to talk about these micro behaviors or micro inequities. So here's a definition. They are a brief, commonplace, verbal or behavioral or systemic dig at you. They're an indignity. And they, they, they're usually unintentional. The people who are doing them don't know that they're doing them, uh, but they, they're somewhat hostile. They hurt and they, they kind of get to you. You take them to heart. They're prejudicial in some way, and they happen to the minorities in an environment. So first chance to vote. Um, so here you go. This is the vote. You could also, if you didn't have a chance to go to slido.com, you can photograph the, um, uh, the code and uh, the QR code and vote there. So what kind of feelings do you think a micro behavior might create in someone who's receiving it. And you can put in as many as you want there and we'll see who's got. It. So type in some things that you think might have happened to a person who's experiencing micro behaviors. Yeah, so you, you're underestimated. You don't believe that people can see your value makes you feel hugely inadequate and unworthy and rejected. And you doubt yourself. All of these things are a product of micro behaviors because as they come in, they build this self-doubt and inadequacy. So I've got another thing that you, and hurt, yes, and sad, insecure, depressed, and unencouraged, <laughs> I, I agree, and uh, not motivated, yeah, and ready to move jobs because you're not motivated, hey, this is good, this is good. So, thank you all for that. When do they happen? They probably don't happen, these micro behaviors, when you're with your group of best girlfriends or your best friends or the, the dinner party that you have with people that you love. They're not gonna be happening then. They're more likely to be happening when you're in a meeting at work, very, very uh, important place for micro behaviors to happen. But when you're catching up with the boss or when you're with a group of peers and they're all competing, for airtime and when you're stressed. So when you are presenting or when you're online, then, then they're likely to be happening at that point. And why is it happening to you? Well, it's about your privilege in society and privilege is multifaceted. So here around the outside, I've given you some examples of facets of privilege. So, you know, my citizenship might give me privilege. So if I'm a citizen, I'm top of the privilege pile. If I've got a valid visa, but I'm not a citizen, that makes me in the mil middle of the privilege pile. And if I'm not a citizen and I don't have a valid visa, 
I'm invisible, I'm at the bottom of the privilege pile. So there are multiple facets of privilege in society. And I want you to check out your own privilege. I've give, I'm going to give you six categories of privilege. And um, I'm reversing the order here. So I'm going to give five points for the middle section. So if your gender appears in the middle section, you're gonna score yourself five points. 10 points for the um, uh, intermediate section and 15 points for the outer section of this privilege map. And you are going to go around the six segments and you are going to score yourself in each of these privilege areas. And then you're going to see that you'll have a point for each of your privilege areas, and then you're going to top them up. So here you go. This is, this is you and you, if you're a female, are going to be scoring 10 on this. And if you're a professional, you'll score five. And so work your way around and then add up your own score. Okay, so if you score very few points, then you are more likely to be uh, assaulted by micro behaviors. If you score lots of points, you are more likely to not have micro behaviors happen regularly in your life. So for example, if you're a young person who is female, but you're not a manager, you're professional, um, you've got no visible disability, but you're black and you're quite cuddly. So you carry a bit of weight like I do. Then you may be scoring somewhere in the region of 40 to 50 points. Look at the middle aged man who's an executive with no visible disability and he's white and he's got a, a kind of slim figure and look at his score. So he is not going to experience micro behaviors and micro inequities as much as a woman or a black woman or a person with disability. So he's not going to notice that it's happening to other people because it's not happening to him. It's not in his life experience. And consequently, it's going to be much harder for him to stop himself doing it because he won't even know he's doing it but it's also going to be harder for him to be an ally to someone to whom it's happening lots because it's just not in his life experience and as i said there are multiple facets of privilege so depending on your privilege you're going to experience many more of these or far fewer of these just a little bit of history. These were uh, built uh, or created or written about initially by Chester Pierce and uh, Mary Rowe in the 1970s. Chester Pierce was talking about microaggressions. Mary Rowe was talking about micro inequities. They mean the same thing fundamentally. You hear microaggressions often talked about with regard to race and micro inequities often talked about with regard to um, gender, but actually they're the same thing. They're a little put down, a behavioral tick, a verbal comment. So let me give you some examples. Um, they're anything that suggests that you're not a true citizen or anything that distances you or assumes that you're not capable, doubts your capability. Anything that tells you, oh, you know, we've got a meritocracy here, when actually there isn't a meritocracy because bias is getting in the way. So there are all of these different 
but this feels too abstract. So let's look at some proper examples. She's one of the lads. Anyone say to you, oh yeah, you're one of the lads. What that says is lads is top of the tree. When you behave like one of them, you've reached their standard. What that subtly says to you is you're not the top of the tree, but if you try hard, you can be. And so that's this little dig that you didn't even notice was happening. You thought it was a compliment. You're one of the lads. But actually, that behind the scenes, there's this other thing going on. Or you don't sound black. It's the same thing. It's white is the right way to sound. You sound like a white person. Therefore, you have made the grade. The subtle dig is black is not good enough, which clearly it is. I would have never have guessed you were gay. Straight is the right thing. This is so personal and yet you don't kind of see it until it's been explained to you. There was a really good study in 2019 and they repeated it last year, last September, women in the workplace from the Lean In organization. And they looked at how often people had their words doubted. So how often has your judgment been questioned at work? So there's the fellas and their judgment is questioned about a quarter of the time. But for the women, then a significantly greater percentage of time is their judgment questioned. And for the black women, almost 40% of the time, their judgment is questioned. Or do you need to provide more evidence of your capability or your competence? And for the gents, they won't notice that the women are being asked to provide more evidence of their capability because it doesn't happen to them. It's only 16% of the time would fellas, you know, experience somebody questioning their capability. Whereas for the women, that's experienced nearly 40% of the time and for the black women, even more. This is, this is subtle and a way in which you are questioned, your competence is questioned. And so there are lots of different ways in which micro inequities get to us on a daily basis. And, you know, it's, it's hurtful in the extreme. Let me give you a story. When I left IBM in 2010, I had to go down to London regularly, always had to get to London. And I would go down into the underground system, into the tube, and um, I would see these men that I hated. And I didn't understand why I hated these men. They were complete strangers. I didn't know them. I had nothing to do with them. And for seven years, no, seriously, seven years, I looked at these men and went, I don't understand why I hate you. I don't understand what this is. And so I started analyzing what they looked like and, and what it could possibly be. They all looked alike. They all had sharp suits, pointy shoes. That was a big thing for me, pointy shoes. And they all walked with absolute confidence, absolute confidence. They almost strutted. And then about five years ago, I started making the connection between my personal feelings and micro behaviors and micro inequities. And I began to realize that these men on whom I was putting all this anger and they were total strangers were actually very similar to the men that I'd worked with in Citibank and IBM and across my career. And they were the ones who'd given me all these micro inequities, all these slights, all these doubts of my capabilities. And that's why I hated them. Not because they were really offensive, because clearly they weren't, I didn't know them. And indeed the men at IBM and Citibank weren't offensive. It was just that over the 40 years of my career, these slights had started to take effect. 
and they started to make me feel like I wasn't worthy and I wasn't good enough. This is death by a thousand cuts. You can imagine if women make up 20% of an organization, uh, and, and here we represent women in blue, and, and the men represent the rest, the 80%, then if we're all allowed to do one micro inequity every day, so every day I'm allowed to and, and I wouldn't be allowed, but um, when someone's talking to me, I can be looking at my phone at the same time and I can do that once. I could do that to a small percentage of men because there's only 20% of me as a group of females, but the men can all do it quite a lot. So uh, the females might experience four of these micro inequities on a day and the men might experience none or possibly one. So when you're in a minority in any way, you'll experience more of the micro inequities and those in the majority just won't notice. So they're not being nasty and they're not, not trying to be allies. They just won't notice it's happening. And to your word map, this is how it makes you feel. You're, you're just not worthy, you're frustrated, you're excluded, and attrition rates go through the roof and costs go through the roof because people move on. They think, I need to find somewhere where it feels better to work. So shifting slightly, let's look at a definition of imposter syndrome. So imposter syndrome, anxiety, self-doubt resulting from persistently undervaluing one's competence or uh, a psychological pattern in which an individual doubts their talents and skills or accomplishments. Now you can see that when somebody's con consistently telling you that they need you to prove that you're good enough, or they're consistently doubting your abilities, or consistently throwing micro inequities and micro behaviors at you, even though they don't realize and they're not being malicious, you start to doubt yourself. You start to believe that you're unworthy. You start to believe that you don't belong here or you snuck in through a back route and somebody's going to discover you and, and, and say, oh, well, you're an imposter. You can see that the two are remarkably linked. And so we as a group of more senior women in tech or uh, we as a group of women and men who are allies to other women can do something about this. So I've got another vote for you, another Slido vote. So if you go back to your Slido, have a go at this one. So now that you know about micro behaviors, how often would you say that you experience them in the course of a typical week? Do you never experience them once a week, maybe? five times a week, or do you think it's constant all the time? So I'd really value your view on this. I, the problem with these Slido things is you don't know if nobody's running for it for you in the background, you don't know when everybody's had a vote. Well, that's interesting. So if it is once a week, then I'll be I'll be interested to know whether you still feel the same way in about three weeks time when you started to watch what's going on in your own environment and started looking for these things because that's one of the things I'm gonna ask you to do. In order to be an ally to other people, uh, somebody's gonna tell me you can check Slido. Ah, oh, thank you, Erica, 13 people voted. So what I'm going to um, 
ask you to do over the course of the of the coming weeks is look for these things and challenge them if you see them happening to other people it's hard to challenge them if you see it happening to you if, if you kind of turn around and go that's the second time you doubted my opinion then you you sometimes sound petulant or so it's good to be an ally to others to point it out for all others help show how it works and then and then move on as a group. Daryl Wing Sue, oh let me go back. Daryl Wing Sue, who was the um, photograph in the middle, he's a more um, recent researcher on this. And he says, look, there are some rules of engagement with micro behaviors and micro inequities. So make it visible. Tell, tell people it's happening. And understand the culture around you and if it's pervasive then in your women's group or in your um in your uh, equality diversity and inclusion group start to do education around the culture and train the perpetrators women's groups can be really powerful for this you know we're doing a new pitch on this thing come along bring a bloke you can only come if you bring a bloke to this it's, it's a really powerful way of getting the message across and be an ally by stopping the behavior when you see it happening. And then try and get some senior people to understand the issue. Um, and then the last part is you have to be really positive about yourself because once you notice all this stuff coming at you, then you realize how the imposter syndrome is just built from it and your sense of lack of worthiness is built from all of this um, detritus that is all this pain that you're getting. You can do micro affirmations. So these are for your, for your friends and colleagues. So every time that you hear somebody put down you can be the one saying, no, that was a great idea or fabulous work. So it's very subtle, but it's, it's commendations and it's easy to do. And then the, the micro advantages is um, more tangible stuff like I'm going to mentor you or I found a job that is just perfect for you. And then helping someone to get through that imposter syndrome issue about I couldn't do that. I can't, I can't be that good. So there's work that you can do to support others as an ally. And the last bit is you could make it fun. This is a, a meeting bingo. So take, I said meetings are a place where, where micro inequities are really rife. Go and, go and build yourself a bingo card, hand it out to everybody in the room and say, we're going to play micro inequity bingo at this meeting. And so if somebody does mansplaining, so this is a man explaining something to a woman who is clearly very competent and didn't need it explaining to her, then you get, a, you get a tick. And so it's fun, but what you've done is you've made everybody aware of the concept of micro inequities or micro behaviors. And then because they're aware, they can propagate and they can become allies too. So I'm done, I'm finished. Um, I just wanted everyone to understand that imposter syndrome, yeah, it's a thing, but it's a thing because of the culture, because of micro behaviors and how they feed that. And uh, I'm going to open for questions. Oh, a couple of points. Remember to remember your own value. So always kind of keep a track of the things that you've successfully done. And that would be, these are the things I was asked to do. These were my objectives for my job. And this is how I worked against those objectives. And then these are the other things that I've done. And because you, you, know, you will be busy, then you will have done other things. And, uh, and don't forget about the Diverse IT Charter and come and, come and check us out and we'll be doing other talks throughout the year. So um, stay in touch with us. So open for questions, people. Um, what, if anything, do you want to say about this and, uh, and 
have any one of, of you um, experienced to share? Gillian, may I have a question? Yeah, sure, Petra. Um, well, I fully understand and agree with imposter, sy imposter syndrome, but I wanted to ask uh, your opinion about uh, the, the proverb, uh, fake it until you make it. You yeah. said that it's a good approach for, uh, for women or how we- Yeah, well, it? so I kind of think it's a good approach, but fake it till you make it only works alongside an understanding of this relationship between micro inequities and the imposter syndrome. So, so yeah, I, I agree, fake it till you make it. Because remember that because of all these micro inequities, you are going to feel like you're not good enough, but actually you probably will be good enough because you, know, you, you are competent and capable. So, so in reality, you're probably not faking it. You probably have made it already. Yeah. It, it, it's a lot about it's understanding. Of, yeah. yeah, it's a tortuous logic, but it does work. Um, uh, Fiona, thank you for the compliment. And uh, yeah, I'll send you a PDF. Um, so I'll, I'll give it to Erica and she can um, uh, pass it out. Oh, yes, uh, Aileen, yeah, it would be good to check back in a few weeks. I don't know how we do that, though. Um, mm, mm, mm. which visual, um, Louise? Love this visual, visual. I don't know which one. Uh, yeah, exactly, Michelle, exactly. You know, you think you feel like an imposter, but actually it's the culture that surrounds you. Oh, Michelle, yeah, you did. You told me about setting up your own consultancy. You and I need to have a, a, a different talk, though, Michelle. Anyone got any questions? You can you can speak out loud. Loud, I don't mind. It should be possible for everyone to unmute themselves. So if you want to say something, you can do that. And if you don't succeed, just uh, drop a message in the chat, and I'll unmute you. Um, I have a question for everybody, and you might like to put answers in the chat. If we do another 30 minute talk, what would you like to hear about? Yeah, see you later, Ellie. Stay in touch. Yeah, if we do something else, any, any suggestions for topics? Hello, I am Małgorzata from Poland, and I have seen the chat from Eva Fabri. Hello, Eva. Are you with us? Is she, is she still there? Uh, she might I'm have dropped off. Right yes, hello. I'm here. I'm very happy to be with you all. It's fantastic. Oh, you're very quiet, Eva. You, you're, um, we, can, we can barely hear you. So can, can we see you or not? Uh, you would love to do that. I will try to enable Hello. That. Hello, <laughs> Eva. Uh, let me introduce excellent woman from our long time cooperation. <laughs> yeah, we're working with Eva as well. So yeah, yes, it's it good. Is. It's a, it's a nice group to, and I'm sure, you know, as I, as I look around, there are a lot of women speakers here, so we can pass this message on about the relationship of, of uh, imposter syndrome and micro inequities, if we didn't already. So maybe Eva, you can share us some of your experiences. <laughs> well, I would like to say, if you are long enough in the business, then you experience ups and downs, but um, personally, uh, I would like to say that from the perspective of uh, European Center for Women and Technology, uh, actually uh, the COVID period has uh, been, uh, I even am ashamed a bit, a bit to say it this way, it has um, been, um, very, it turned out very uh, positive uh, in the sense that uh, Many of the organizations with whom we worked with earlier, in spite of the fact that we have in our statutes that 75% of our services will be online, 
for example, if we call for a webinar, then there were maybe uh, 10 or 15 people who attended. But do, during and after the COVID time, we really have a huge upswing. So now we suddenly have uh, on the average 60, 60 people, and it doesn't matter if it's a European call or a global call. And, um, and, and we have also been uh, uh, successful in uh, getting some new large scale uh, projects. But I would like to say that uh, now I am uh, totally under the influence of um, the political scene. And sorry, sorry, Eva. Is it just me or um, is anyone else having problems hearing Eva? Yes, Eva is very quiet. Yeah. Well, you said very you were totally quiet. under the influence of, and then it. And no. then it <laughs> I would say that uh, with, um, with all the, the um, refugees and the, the present uh, situation, I think that uh, the need for uh, uh, connecting uh, between us is going to be bigger than ever before. And I think that uh, the, all the issues that we raise today will uh, be of enormous value for uh, working with uh, the people that have uh, different types of needs for, uh, let's say, adapting to the new reality of the world. Yeah, uh, I think I, you're right. Uh, yeah. So uh, ever saying that uh, up is uh, extra relevant, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Ever it. saying that this is all really relevant and the connection between us is is really relevant, given what's happening today in the world. Um, so I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm sorry, Eva. It's so difficult to hear you. I don't know what what's going on, but but you're yeah. It's really and, uh, Then I would just like have to add one more thing, and it was that um, last week I had a, a personal um, call with uh, your new. Oh, with Jakub. Yes, I knew you did. Yeah. And, uh, I look forward uh, to uh, all the ideas that we raised uh, in our discussion and also. Uh, more close collaboration between uh, our organizations. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I hope we'll uh, meet in different contexts. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So unless any of you have got any further questions, I'll draw this to a close. Um, it um, would if I great. may interrupt, Julian, oh, I just Erica. saw that uh, a uh, couple of uh, attendees uh, expressed interest in hearing more about this. Uh, and uh, about strategies to deal with the imposter syndrome and microaggressions. Uh, and uh, I have uh, a suggestion to make because I imagine that Julian, you'd be uh, available to run a session on this uh, as well. And if we do, um, we might uh, perhaps uh, institute a bring your own man policy. Oh, this is that's really good. Yes. This is an idea that I actually kind of stole from another event I was at. And uh, it is, as we know, it is really important that men also uh, get to hear this message. Yeah, and, and we so used it's, to do it at uh, IBM, so I agree. Let's let's do it next time, and we'll do, and I'll I'll do a, an intro to this again, but then we'll do we'll do um, uh, how to deal with it. And it would then be great if uh, any one of you uh, who would attend a session would bring at least one male colleague. So uh, Damla's got a question, and Kai's got a question. So Damla. It was really nice to hear from you about this topic. Um, I'm kind of young compared to most of you and the begin in the beginning of my career. But what I wanted to say is that uh, what I noticed in my surrounding, especially in women and in men, is that young um, generations are more uh, considerate of the subjects towards them as well, male and female, not just uh, about women. And what I see is that in most new companies, startups, SMEs, 
um, managers and directors are more considerate of the situation as well. Mm. They're trying to uh, collaborate more with uh, young people and um, trying to involve them in more projects um, and researches. And I think it's uh, small by small that we're going to achieve uh, this um, side of the things that it's really when we work together, when we listen to each other, that we're going to make some progress and grow all together. So, and noticing from what you said and the importance and the different aspects of the subject was really informative for me. And I would like to thank you all for your contributions and uh, your experiences. Yeah. And thank you for yours, because it's a really positive note to, to kind of end on. And uh, yeah, I, I hope little by little that that young culture will be pervasive enough to, to make a change. Thank you. And Kai, you've got a question? Hello, yes. Uh, sorry for the limited um, visibility here. Actually, my computer decided on its own, so I'm only here with my mobile phone, which is, uh, anyway, and that's why I didn't raise my hand earlier, because I hope I would get my computer to work to have a, have a better participation in this discussion. So I found this a very enlightening, very interesting talk, some things I'd seen before, and now they put, are put in some perspective. Um, what I would also like to suggest, if we don't have time to discuss it now, because I wanted to, to raise that, is um, the mitigation measures, because you had this full slide of mitigation measures, and we didn't discuss them very much. And actually the issue of, or the point of fake it till you make it. That was one that was spontaneously when raising my, uh, my reaction, because it's actually, if, if I understand correctly what, what is meant by it, so maybe different interpretations of it. This is actually what we're trying to get out of people to not do it because it is an actually killing, killing good an organizational culture. And now trying to, or, or bringing it in via another channel, I think is really something we should be careful about. I mean, there is quite a few people say, hey, this kind of fake is exactly what is making our, our organizational business meeting, whatever culture difficult. People should should not do that. And now telling telling women do that because um, of, of, of various um, imposter situations, I think will we'll confuse a lot of, I'm not sure that is a contribution to. That so is a so contribution it came to, from um, the woman who, uh, where was she from? Uh, the Lean In woman uh, from Facebook, was she? Was she the CEO? Michelle, you're on mute. Is it Sandy? Uh, yeah, I can't remember, but anyway. Um, but she said, you know, you, you need to fake it till you make it. But if you think about logic, Kai, if you've constantly been assaulted by micro behaviors so that you doubt yourself, but actually you're really good, then when, you, when you're told to fake it till you make it, you're not really faking it. All you're doing is you are bolstering yourself internally to believe that you've got something before you, so, so you really have it, but you have to be, you have to teach yourself that you really have it. And that's the concept in, in this case of fake it till you make it. Well, well, if you if, if you really have it, I mean, the question, of course, in some scenarios is, of course, who knows actually whether you have it. Honestly, Facebook is for me not a company which I would say is good because I, Facebook is a fake it till you make it company. And it is yeah, a, I get that. This is a success of Facebook, and that has created lots of problems for all of us. So face, Facebook yeah. is a company, including including all of the management there and the original management that is actually that is actually living from the faking till you make it paradigm and creating trouble. Yeah. I mean, I see, your, I see your point that, of course, if you're lack self-confidence that can help to to overcome the lack of self-confidence yeah. but of course there is a there is a limit to abilities of people also and if everybody overplays their abilities yeah you know i i, I think in this listen, context listen. kai it's it's about believing in yourself more than anything else because it's very likely because you've suffered lots of micro inequities that you're already there but you just have to you know kind of internally fake it because externally you've got it but that means basically that i mean many people will probably have the belief that they have under that they are undervalued and if they all do it i i would assume we will end up with an 80 90 percent 
uh, fake it till you make it people who are all coming up with these um, what what they think what they have yeah yeah but what how would how do we deal with that then well if that i mean if this becomes well you know uh, so that thing that i did early on with the privilege um not everybody uh, you know believes that they're not good enough because of their privilege and their status within society so mm, it's it's a challenge but because I, had, I mean, all of these management handbooks, they always say believe in believe in, in yourself and go forward and certainly you're undervalued. So that is, again, you have the statistics there, but everybody gets told basically to do that. Everybody gets told think, think more of yourself than, than what you currently are. And so I think, you know, uh, so I think this is a great topic for what we do in the next session. Um, and so we'll set up another session about imposter syndrome and we'll do a discussion on fake it till you make it. I think that's that, a good idea. What, I would appreciate that. Sorry, Kai. Priska? So, sorry, I just said I would appreciate that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, another aspect is, uh, you know, like they say, well, to, to cope with that, you know that you have these uh, um, influences, negative influences, you should have like cheerleaders around you to tell you how good you are, because they suffer the most as well. Uh, but I think um, women have to definitely work on that aspect, or I don't know how you experienced it, but uh, um, when I look back on my career, I had often women that were the biggest enemies and not the man. Yeah. Um, so now this happens, there's some really interesting research yeah. about, about and, and we can put this into the next, um, next session as well, about these women who appear to us all as being the worst. And, and we'll look in the next session, because this is a really good topic, at what makes us think that about those women. And it's really, really fascinating. Um, so good point, Prisca. We'll put that in the next session. And Erica, would you keep a note of the bits we're gonna put in? And uh, I, she might have gone, Michelle's gone, but I thought she had a question. So um, I am going to wrap it up there because we said uh, about 40 minutes. So. Thank you, everybody, for turning up this morning. I hope you found it useful. And I will get Erica to send out um, uh, a PDF of the slides. Yeah? Yes, of course. I will Thank you, uh, publish a small summary on our website and uh, also put up this uh, and also circulate the slides. OK, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everyone. You, uh, yes, you. there is a recording, Skevi. Okay, uh, thank you so much for joining everyone. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye, thank you. Cheers, guys.